welcome back and today I'm going to be looking at this thing called ESP Now on the ESP32 microcontroller and this is like a, a method of um, transmitting and receiving information via the Wi-Fi which is um, on the um, microprocessor itself so I'm indebted to the random nerd tutorials as usual um, and uh, it shows you how to do this and I've got a quite an interesting uh, uh, demo for you later involving a servo which you may find interesting. Uh, what I'm interested in here is the one-way communication between an ESP32 and another ESP32. Uh, you can actually do multiple to single and single to multiple uh, but uh, this is the one uh, in the tutorial and it's the one that is actually most uh, useful uh, for the moment and what I'm going to be doing is on, the, on this guy here on the transmitter I'm going to put my Kalman filter on here and the uh, MPU uh, uh, 6050 which I looked at in a previous video so that measures pitch angle and the Kalman filter smooths things out gives me a better estimate and that's going to be f fired off here to this guy here on the right hand side which uh, will be controlling um, a digital uh, uh, motor in, 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 uh, as a position control system. Uh, it's using a lag lead uh, compensation, actually integrator lead, rather than lag lead. And in the uh, tutorial itself, well, I mean, you can actually read about this in the tutorial, but I'm just briefly uh, summarizing the, um, the, the whole thing, is that the ESP32 has got its own network access point uh, and so um, you know you don't need to use the Wi-Fi of your house or whatever it's got its own Wi-Fi built in uh, but it needs to know um, at least the transmitter needs to know where the data is going and so for that you need the MAC address of the receiver uh, the receiving e EP, e ESP32 and you need this little bit of code that uh, they've published which is uh, pretty um, basic very short and you just press the reset button and up pops the uh, the um, hex numbers for the MAC address it's very easy to find um, by using that uh, and then uh, you put these um, uh, hex numbers in an array this one here UNT8 T broadcast address and these are the ones for um, my servo chip and uh, and then you want to create a um, structure, this is how they do it at least it's actually a really neat way of doing it you have a, stru a structure uh, which um, struct, uh, struct message here and in my case there's not much point having a structure because I've only got one variable in it which is uh, a float uh, but uh, in their example they're sending a string and a whole load of integers and everything and you can send a whole load of things really I should send two but I'm only doing one because I'm going to be sending the common filter estimate here in it's part of this in this A term and then we create the structure called my data and the receiver we have the same structure and we receive it through that structure receive it as the contents of that structure itself uh, so uh, this is at the, still at the transmitter uh, we have an infinite loop and uh, the, in that array, which uh, not an array, sorry, in this, this structure, my data, um, we put the uh, common filter estimate. I covered the common filter in previous um, uh, videos, uh, not in a huge amount of detail, admittedly, but uh, uh, this is coming from the MPU uh, 6050 and uh, using a steady state common filter or Wiener filter designed on MATLAB and then the, the values put in steady state values into this processor and then we send it uh, through this ESP now protocol uh, and that's the uh, MAC address there and uh, the size of the data then at the receiving ESP32 you also uh, need these commands here and that's um, this is the the data my data dot a is which you're going to be receiving. It's just a single float, 
and uh, I'm going to put that in uh, as the set point. That's going to be the set point for my digital servo. That's the date and data received um, coming in. That's the length of the data and so on, size of the data. So I also got these lines in the code that uh, I've commented out the original one, which was uh, where the servo was controlled by um, an external quadrature encoder and uh, that would have been counter 2. Counter 1 is the uh, encoder built into the motor, which we'll see in a minute. And uh, I've just called set point is the um, data that's been sent from the Kalman filter on the external um, ESP32. Then I've scaled the set point by 10 just to make it more sensitive so it's a bit better demo, otherwise it doesn't move very far. And so this is really what we're doing as a block diagram. Um, we've got the MPU 6050 um, and the Kalman filter software added onto that, which is connected to the ESP32. Uh, and that uh, in turn gets transmitted to the receiving ESP32, of which we know this guy's MAC address. And uh, we've got an H bridge and motor feedback from a quadrature encoder and we're reading the angle of rotation. We've got to stabilize this loop here and uh, we're just sending the set point. So it's actually quite um, an interesting system. Uh, the thing about it is, here's the servo of course you've seen before. This is quite a, a tight servo, it's got uh, difficult to move it. Uh, and change the software a little bit in that the, if I want to I can move it manually as you can see that's not a problem from the from the manual set point so I've really just summed the set points from this one and the one coming from the wireless system and here's my wireless system here it's just stuck in a box so you can't you know I did it just it's a bit easier I got a switch on the front so I can switch it on and what should happen now you see, as I move this one, I can go right back the other end of the room. You'll see it's still, still controlling it. So that's my pitch. So my sensor can be uh, somewhere else, not connected at all by wires. Could be handy in, say, um, quadcopters and so on, or certain industrial applications where you don't want to wire the actual sensor. This is self-contained, so I could send the um, the set point uh, pitch, and I could also send the velocity estimate from the Kalman filter. But I'm only sending one at the moment. It, it would only take the modification of the structure to add an extra uh, part to the structure to do that. And of course, the other thing I can do is I could make this as part of a platform and use this to stabilize the platform. Put, mount this on the top and get feedback and close a loop around that so that it's a self-stabilizing platform. But look, no wires. I'm just moving this. I can move it much further, of course. It doesn't work in the the um, roll because I, I didn't wire that up, but. Of course, you could have a second Kalman filter and you could transmit that as well. You know, another motor as well for that. And it's quite a powerful. Th this uh, motor is still running at the same bandwidth. It's, it's got a sampling rate of 10 kilohertz. And uh, I can turn this off and then you can see nothing's happening. We'll turn it back on again almost immediately. It works. So that's the system. ESP now and it's really worth uh, looking at. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.